So in John number 6, Jesus says this. I believe it's in verse 36. We'll go there. Verse 35, excuse me. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Have you ever been so hungry you've been wanting something? You don't know exactly what it was and you're hungry. You couldn't figure out what was wrong. Yesterday I got up. I don't, I don't know what time I got up. I got up, I think, somewhat early. And I was, and I was, I went all day and I was just, I just didn't, I felt lethargic. I felt weak. I felt just yuck. I sat down. I'm like, what did I eat today? Now, what is, you know, what's going on? Am I getting sick? I'm like, no. I'm like, what did I eat today? I, had a, I, I didn't eat anything. So I stopped and I got some chicken breast. I got a chicken breast from Wendy's and some bacon and some cheese. And I was like, that's good. No carbs. Doing good. And the Asiago, now I'm addicted to Asiago cheese. But I was like, it's, but it's, it's not Gouda, but it's, it's okay. You know, um, it's an addiction, but it's not Gouda. You know? so, anyways, but um, I was like, I was weak. And then last night I got home and I was like, I was weak again. I was like, I just, I was... I was weak. You figure the calories I ate was maybe 400 calories the most. Figured maybe maybe 450. And I was like, I, that's all I had all day. And I was like, I'm feeling weak. And I was like, I didn't. I wasn't. I was feeling low. And I was feeling no energy. And I went home and I had some vegetables and I had a you know I had a hamburger. And I was like, uh, you know, like a hamburger patty. And I was like, okay, now I'm feeling good. I was like, but your body needs food. How is it that Christians can go week in and week out not reading the Bible, day in and day out without reading the Bible? I don't get it. But the Bible says, I am the bread of life. There is a world out today going out to church today. They're going to go to church. They're going to get up today on Sunday morning. They're going to go to the church at 9 o'clock or 9.30 or 10 or 10.30, 11 o'clock, whenever their church service is. They're going to go. They're going to listen to the music, watch the, you know, watch the praise and worship team, the fog and lights and all this stuff. And then they're going to, or they're going to go to a dead church, wherever it's going to be at. They're going to go, they're going to go and they're, they're going to hear the preaching and then they're going to go home and say, Nothing. Nothing. People need to have the bread of life. The Bible says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? They shall be filled. That's what God, that's what Jesus said in the Mount. He says, you'll be filled. If we come to Jesus Christ, he satisfies. Thinking of John chapter 4, Jesus said, I am the water of life. Come to me, you'll never thirst again. I've been saved since I've been five since I was five years old, and I've never thirsted after any other religious thing. I've never relig- I never searched after Buddha or Hare Krishna or Muhammad or Mary. I've never thirsted after anything but the things of God. Well, why is that? Because He satisfies. He satisfies the longing soul. He, he satisfies. He satisfies. In John chapter eight, He says, "I'm the light of the world." These are the I am's of Christ. Point number one. These are the I am's of Christ. I am the light of the world. We're looking for illumination. We're looking for understanding. We're looking for enlightenment. Jesus is the light of the world. He lighteth every man that cometh into the world, but until we trust in him, we don't understand what light is. He reveals the darkness in our life. He, re- he reveals the things in us that is not right. He shows us what is not right around us. He is the light of the world. He illumines us. Light comforts. It warms us. Light is not just to give direction. It, it, it warms us. It protects us. He's the light of the world. And then he says, ye are the light of the world. Well, how is that? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are the light of the world because we are the light of the world. Amen. But he says in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no added truth. There's no unknown truth. It is Jesus Christ. That's why I love when Paul was, on, when Paul was up there on, on the, on, in Athens. He was walking by and he saw all the, all the um, statutes and, and all the, you know, the... Um, monuments and all the idolatry and everything. He says, you guys even have a, a monument to the unknown God. He goes, and that God I'm going to declare to you. This is the unknown God you don't know about. And he declared it to him. And he told him about Jesus. And, and he told him about God. And then it says that some believed, some rejected it, and some said, well, hear more. And that's what happens anytime you preach the truth. You're going to find out door knocking. There's some going to believe. There's some that are going to reject. And there's some going to say, yeah, can you come back and tell me more about this later on? Well, I'm not, I'm not quite going to make that decision. I'm not too sure yet, but thank you for teaching me that. Those, those people, I mean, they never know they're going to be one way or another. And I think that's why I believe follow-up is so important. 